how's things going in the training camp? Just talking to a few players this week, all very positive about the getting used to the conditions and the spirit in the camp. Yeah, it's been good. It's ideal preparation time, you know, coming here to Turkey, having um, a long stint of, of days here together to work together. Um, obviously, there was the home base sessions as well taking place in Dublin. Um, and then obviously the friendly game with, with uh, the Philippines. So it's been ideal preparation um, and perfect for this for this time of the year to get ready for this um, international window. Just going back to, say, around this time last year, you had the couple of games against Iceland and there were defeats and there was a run of seven defeats in a row and people were starting to think, you know, where, where are things going? But Vera had said, these games will stand to you, playing against better opposition. Then the Australia game comes along and felt like a, a very significant win that, that night in Tala. In terms of the group itself, during those defeats, do you start to question things or do you have to just trust the process? Yeah, obviously the, the defeats hurt, but like you said, you just have to trust the process and you know that you're on the right path. Um, you're competing against the, the best teams um, at that level. So obviously it's not going to come overnight or it's not going to come easily um, to work in progress. And you just have to take it game by game and, and um, try to keep... Oh, add someone there. Um, try to keep focused on the on the tasks and try to keep improving as a group. And yeah, it's, it's not easy when you're experiencing a lot of losses, but um, it's just about maintaining our drive and our long-term vision. Yeah, and it's clear to see, I mentioned the Australia game, but and then obviously the, the campaign started and it's clear to see the improvements in the squad and the confidence. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's testament to the level that the players are playing at now. You know, everyone is, is pushing themselves individually. And obviously, collectively, that will pay off. And you've seen that in the performances. And just finally for myself, obviously, going back to club game, you signed for Manchester United earlier in the year. You know, you just it was clear to see when you signed just what it meant to you. How was the experience for you playing for a club as big as Manchester United and obviously a club that you've supported all your life? Yeah, I mean, it was everything I hoped it would be and more, to be honest, you know, as a lifelong fan. Um, that was my dream, you know, to play for United and wear that jersey. And to be honest with you, I never probably thought it was going to be possible, especially how they didn't have a women's team up until very recently. Um, but, you know, um, I can't even put it into words really how, how it felt. Um, it was a, an amazing achievement for me um, personally and one that I uh, really, really uh, took a lot of pride and honour in. OK, thanks very much, Diane, and best of luck on Monday. Thanks very much. Thank you. Louise, uh, Louise Phil. Yeah, hi, how are you doing? Can you hear me all right? Hi, Louise. Yeah, good. It's just a couple of questions for me, I suppose. So Ireland hammered Georgia 11-0 when they were in Dublin last, um, but they have poor records in the group. Um, they've yet to score in six games so far in the group, and they've also conceded 41 goals. Can we expect a bigger challenge from them this time out there next week? Yeah, I think so, absolutely. You know, a team like them, they're going to be learning and improving every time they play against uh, teams like this in, in this group. Um, so obviously they've, they've taken heavy defeats, but with every game, they're getting more experience and um, experiencing what it's like to play at this intensity and this level. So, of course, they're only going to get better and improve. And of course, they're on their home patch as well. So it's not going to be an easy game by any means. Um, we have to be really sharp, really up for it and um, be prepared to give it absolutely everything because at the end of the day, it's an international and no international is, is easy. Yeah, and on that, they'll, they'll probably try to defend deep and make it quite difficult for yourselves. How important will it be to display patience in the game? Yeah, of course, we'll have to be um, displaying patience, but also, you know, we need to up it up the speed at times when necessary um, and just be ruthless um, and clinical. But obviously then, you know, we have to be really switched on defensively um, and just try to cut out any sort of threat that they that they have. Um, so it's going to be a game that's going to require a lot of different um, elements to it in order for us to be successful. Just one more from me. The latest world rankings were released last week and Ireland are up to 27th. That's the highest ranking ever. So there must be great confidence in the camp now at the moment when you see that reflected in the likes of the rankings. Yeah, of course, it's always nice to see. But um, I mean, we haven't achieved anything yet. We haven't gotten to a Euros or a World Cup. Um, so that is obviously the the hope for us and that's our target so um the rankings will will take care of itself depending on our performances and our results um that's like kind of a byproduct of of what we're focusing on
as long as we get our performances right, the results will come and the rankings will come after that. But um, again, it's um, just a part of the journey. It's not our target. That's great. Thanks very much. Uh, Peter Brannigan. Here, no. James Fenton. No, okay. Uh, Emma Duffy. Hi, Diana. How are you keeping? Hi, Emma. Um, come here, you missed the Sweden game in, in April through injury. Um, where did you watch it? What was it like watching on? I know, obviously, it would have been really disappointing to not be part of the group there, but what was it like watching from the outside, I guess? Yeah, I just watched it from Manchester. Um, obviously, I was in the middle of my rehab. I had just gotten injured a couple of weeks prior, a week or two prior, yeah. Um, so a strange one to, to look on from the outside for once. Um, but, of course, I was just, like, the biggest fan that evening. And... Uh, was just so proud to watch the girls perform like that. And I think the team really showed what we're capable of. Um, terrific result against a team that obviously have now qualified for the World Cup automatically, number two in the world. Um, so yeah, we showed as a team what we're capable of, but I think generally as a team, we know we have another level to reach as well. Can I ask you a little bit about the, the competition in the squad, Diane, particularly in defence, like, you know, not just you, but a few of you have kind of been in and out of the starting team. And, um, you know, it's obviously a big challenge. Like, does that just lift everything around you as well? Like, Yeah, absolutely. I think um, generally the Irish team have always had a really good uh, defensive line. Like we've always had a lot of competition for places since I can remember being here. Um, and of course, that that's what makes us so strong is that competition. And you need that all across the pitch, not just in the... Uh, defensive areas but all over um, and I think we're getting to that stage now where there is a really good healthy competition and, and every team needs that we need that to get to the next level good stuff and then last one for me Dan. Um, Phil touched on it earlier obviously United uh, I believe your contract's up um, it was just until the end of the season I know you're probably not going to tell us now and you're fully focused on on international duty but uh I suppose the fact that your club options are open or there could be a deal agreed there, uh, things are a little bit up in the air at the minute. Yeah, like you said, I'm, I'm not really thinking about anything got to do with club right now. I'm, I'm here with Ireland and, and my main focus is, is on Georgia. Um, that's the most important game. The next one is always the most important game and especially this one with how important it is. So um, just fully focused on that and, and doing the job here. Super. Best of luck next week, Diane. Go Thanks, Emma. I uh, could I ask if anyone wants to start a question, put up your virtual hands, just so I'm not calling people that maybe don't want to ask a question. Anyone want to ask a question, put up your little yellow hand there. This has his hand up. Who's that? No, I thought. Sorry. Uh, uh, Paul? Paul Lennon, yeah. Thanks, yeah, Karen. Diane, is, it, is this for, uh, are we holding this? Is it okay to call Everything's going to be just uh, released at six o'clock tomorrow, Paul, so it's all all kind of the yeah. same one. Sorry, I just I was coming in a bit late to this. Thank, thanks yeah. very much. Uh, Diane, just obviously, you, you've got experience in the States of playing in fairly oppressive heat. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you find last Sunday, and what's the expectation when you go to Georgia, which is going to be very hot next week? Yeah, look, you just got to acclimatise to it the best you can. Um, I always find the first session is probably the hardest and then you'll you'll gradually see your body start to adapt to those those demands of the heat and um, just have to be really well prepared. You know, the, the doctor and the physio team have really like well prepared us for this camp, made us aware of, of how vital our fluids are in particular with this heat. And we have very various protocols in place to help us deal with um, those temperatures. So it's been great, like I said, to be here in Turkey, where actually the temperatures are higher than what it will be um, in Georgia. So um, I think everyone will be well prepared um, and had a lot of sessions under that intensity and under that heat. And uh, like you said, a few of us um, have experienced playing in, in that heat before with, with clubs. So that will also stand to us. That's great. Thanks, Jeff. So, uh, Owen Kowser. Uh, hey, Dion. How are you? Um, Hi, Owen. 
Uh, you mentioned there earlier about how, like, as well as good as those rankings are, it is all about qualification. Is that a change in mentality um, from maybe years gone by? And, and if so, what was the change? Um, I wouldn't say it's a change in mentality. I think if you're if you're playing for your country or at any level, you know, you you have goals and you have targets that you want to achieve. And I'm sure everyone had the goal of of getting to a major tournament. Um, Obviously, with the collection of, of players that we have now, it's it's the best we've ever had. So those those targets become a little bit more attainable, let's say. Um, but yeah, they, they are the, the targets that we have and expectations of ourselves. Now, obviously, the, the group winner spot is gone in this particular campaign. Um, but the possibility to still qualify is there. And it's these next three games that will determine that. You know, it was a great result against Sweden, but it's these next three games that are going to determine if we get to that playoff spot. So... We have to take every game as it comes and be absolutely 100% focused on, on each one. And the next one is always the most important. And that's Jordan now. Uh, is it a case, as you said, like this is probably the strongest squad ever? Like it's now just seized this moment? It is. It is. It is the case um, in terms of the individual caliber of players, but also it's the, the growth of the women's game in general is, is also helping that. Um, you see a lot of teams going professional now, a lot of our girls playing professional. Um, in really competitive environments. And so, so of course, that's going to have a knock-on effect to the national team and, and improve our quality. All right. Thanks a lot, Diane. Best of luck. Thanks, Owen. Dave Kelly. Hi, Diane. Um, just a couple. Firstly, on um, the, cl the club situation uh, in terms of um, game time, and you mentioned a couple of injuries. You had an injury kind of issue. But did you play enough um, games to justify what you wanted to get out of the experience so far? Well, actually, I played every 90 minutes from when I arrived to when I got injured. Um, I unfortunately got injured just before the, the showpiece at Old Trafford, so uh, I was obviously very bitter to miss that occasion. But, um, you know, every minute that I was there, I cherished it. And I, I said that to myself going into that experience and whatever happens long term happens. But um, I've... I've accomplished my dream um, and no one can ever take that away from me. And just in terms of the, of, of your next move, what are the um, thought processes in your head as you make that decision? Well, again, like I said, nothing's um, decided yet with my future, um, with, with Man United or whoever. So right now it's not in my mind. I'm just focused on what I can do here with Ireland. It's a different team, different um, targets. So that's all that I'm focused on right now. Just in terms of Ireland, I mean, how how can you personally maybe tell the public how how you cope with non-selection? Are you are you um, good mentally like that, or do you seek out discussions, or do you know what to work on yourself? Um, I think I rate my mental strength as one of as one of my highest um, attributes. Uh, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am without being mentally strong. That's for sure. I've always had challenges throughout my whole career. Um, very in various uh, ways, selection being a small one of them. Um, so it's just something you have to deal with as a as an athlete at the, at the top game, and you just have to keep focusing on on uh, your strengths, improve your weaknesses, and and try to do whatever you can to to get your moment and uh, seize that opportunity. And again, just for the general public, the team <clears throat> would appear to me to be appreciably better at holding on to the ball. Um, in the last couple of years, is there is there a general key to that? Is it just the collective getting better? Um, is it just more together in sessions? I mean, can you kind of nail down why this team is better at holding onto the ball in a shape and being better in possession? Well, like I said before, I think it's testament also to the level that we're playing at individually. Um, when you're playing in a full time environment every day, obviously your your skill level is going to improve. And that is carried on then into when we meet as an international group. Um, and then what comes into it also is just more game time together, having set players playing consistently with each other to get those relationships and to be able to keep the ball and have a rhythm and a connection, um, non-verbal and verbal. So all in all, that helps to, to basically improve our level of, of possession. Right. Give that little girl a spoon of Weedabix. Cheers. Cheers, <laughs> Lollipop. Yeah. So anybody else? Uh, John? Yeah, please. Thanks, Gareth. Uh, Diane, how you doing? Hi. How you doing? Uh, just a couple for me. Um, 
like you mentioned there, we are in sort of playoff territory now at the stage. It's within your hands. And can I just ask, the last time we were there was a long time ago, 2008. And you, I think, had made already made your debut. Were you in the squad at that stage or were you, were you missing from that playoff against Iceland? No, I wasn't a part of that playoff against Iceland. Um, I had been uh, banished from the team after uh, falling out with Noel King, so I wasn't a part of that group. And what did it take to get you back in? A new manager. <laughs> Sue Ronan came in and uh, she'd been my underage manager and she brought me in straight away. She said you should never been out. So, so this, is, this is even bigger motivation. I know some of the girls have already played in the playoff, but you haven't. So this is a good target to have. Yeah, like I said, that's our target uh, as a group. That's our expectation now that the group winner spot is gone. Um, the playoff spot is still achievable. But again, we haven't got there yet. We have still three games to go and uh, we haven't done anything yet. And does, does it make it even, even a bit more, um, I suppose, focus your mind when you see all your United squad probably all getting ready for the Euros this summer in terms of tournament football? Yeah, of course. It's, that's a bitter moment. You know, you think, oh, we should be there. It's in England. Opening game in Old Trafford. Um, but it wasn't meant to be for whatever reason. So all we can do is, is learn from the past and, uh, and implement that going forward now. Because we know what's at stake.